So without further ado, you are um, in a session to talk about non-code contributions. This is part of a larger contribution workshop that I usually give at camps and conferences. Um, I am not going to go through the code part today. Um, if you do want to see the code part, you're welcome to join us on Saturday. And let's start. Um, who am I? Amy June Heinlein. I work with Canopy Studios. I am the open source community ambassador and QA engineer over there. I help organize accessibility talks in the broader um, accessibility community. I'm a core mentor for Drupal contributions. What that means is I help out with DrupalCon. I hope help out at local and regional Drupal events like MidCamp and Florida Camp and Bad Camp. I'm also a member of the community working group community health team um, as a liaison between like the mentors and um, contributors and accessibility and um, kind of focusing on community health. I work at Canopy Studios. Uh, they are an open source website strategy, design, development, and support agency. We specialize in data-driven intelligent solutions and we're hiring all different kinds of positions. So hit me up. Um, I think I'm the only Canopian here at MidCamp, but you're welcome to reach out through Slack. Um, and um, I live in a very urban community and um, we have, lots of people who make up our community. And it's very important to think about how our communities deal with racism. So I just want to um, make sure that our community stand um, against hate um, and racism. Hate against Asian American Pacific Islander communities have risen during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. Um, so why are we here today? Um, you can see this slide is divided up into two different parts, um, but we're going to like during this sort of, I'm going to do like a little bit of a slide presentation and then we'll just talk, but um, we're going to talk about why we contribute the benefits of contributing and then the different types of non-code contributions. And at the bottom of the slide um, really talks about what I'm going to do in the workshop on Saturday, which is really focusing more on that code part of contributions. We're, we'll go over um, issue queue etiquette, um, like kind of give like a higher level uh, look at what the issue queue is. Um, we'll go over the old patching and review process and we'll chat a little bit about pull requests on Saturday. So why contribute? You know, the guilt thing, if you depend on open source, open source depends on you. Um, but more than anything, you know, um, your values, your, your contributions are really valued. Like working with the best and brightest in the Drupal community, um, everyone has something to contribute, whether or not you're, a, you're a, a coder or human resources or, you know, a writer, everyone looks at Drupal in a little bit different way. So everyone values everybody. And then contributing makes you feel like you're more part of the Drupal community. Um, say you're going to camps and cons and you're participating in the hallway track and you're participating in sessions. But once you know how to contribute, you can go to contribution day, which is another aspect, you know, and you meet different types of people. So it really makes you feel more integrated in that Drupal community. And then say you work for an agency or a Drupal shop and it's not one of their highest priorities, you know, and maybe you don't have the privilege of contributing on your own time because sometimes contributing back to Drupal is a privilege that some of us don't have. You know, um, you work 40 hours a week and you have a family to raise. So doing it on your own time just isn't possible sometimes. So what are some of the things that you can like say to your agency, you know, um, about why they should give back? Um, Again, back to that Drupal depends on sharing our knowledge, you know, um, because companies are consuming Drupal because it's that free open source, you know, so they certainly should give back, you know, um, they should appreciate that value of helping each other and appreciating others and helping with it. When we all help, when every agency helps, it really uh, reduces that duplicating effort and redundancy sometimes, you know, if you create a patch for something and you give it back, that's one less thing some, someone else has to worry about. That patch is already created. Um, and in the tech industry, using and contributing to our open source software like Drupal 
is seen as corporate citizenship, you know, and it's part of our, our um, agencies and our Drupal shops, really, for lack of a better word, social responsibility. Um, and it's good for talent recruitment, you know, um, it's fun and rewarding to work with those, um, those smartest people in Drupal, you know, and simply put the more those agencies um, give the more that they'll get back. And this is really reflected when uh, potential employees and partners view that agency page on Drupal.org. Um, so what are some of the benefits for us, you know, not just agencies, but why do we contribute, you know, um, it makes us feel good. You know, it moves the Drupal project closer to perfection. Um, it gives you Drupal street cred. You know, people can look at your Drupal profile and see that you you actually contribute back. Um, it can help build your resume. You know, you can use that as a, a point on your resume, you know, pointing back to your Drupal.org profile. I have to move because the sun's in my eyes. Um, and really, the more you contribute, the more you learn. You know, I, I always tell people I'm a non-code developer, but every time I work in the issue queue, I learn something. So I learn a little bit of code each time. Um, I learn a little bit more about testing. I learn a little bit more about accessibility, you know, all of those kinds of things. Um, this is an example of a Drupal.org profile. I just like to use Drees because why not? You know, um, this is that part where you can kind of um, help build your resume, right? You know, you can see there's a little bit of a bio. Um, it has a little bit of a work history. You know, if you work for other agencies beyond Acquia, that would show up there as well. Um, you can see how long he's been on Drupal. You can see he hasn't really worked on Drupal recently, but it shows his recent contributions and different, you know, core commits and things like that. It shares his social links. Um, this picture doesn't reflect it, but it shows mentors. Um, so this is that part of that Drupal resume. And like I said, we're really gonna talk about non-code contributions. So different types of contributions. Um, and I cannot stress this enough. Anytime I talk about giving back to Drupal, you can still give back to Drupal in many ways beyond code. And you can give back every day of the year without ever having making a patch. That's something really valuable uh, to think about in that. And I think that the mindset of some people think that it's always about code, but it's not. Um, so there's a link here, um, drupal.org community slash contributor guide. And that may be antiquated because I know that we're working on migrating a lot of the things over. Um, so I reserve the right that that might be wrong. But there's this thing called the contributor guide or the getting involved guide where you can use filters and find your role in Drupal. You know, you can find a task, you can find what contribution areas um, to work on. And this just recently, I'm gonna use the word finished for lack of a better word, but it just launched. Um, and so there's a, there's, there's a lot of valuable information on these pages on how to give back. And contributions can take all kinds of forms. Um, external documentation guides, translations, sharing knowledge, um, extending Drupal through themes and modules, promoting the platform, organizing events, and the issue queue. And I'm gonna go over some of these in like really fine detail in just a minute. Um, Documentation. When I first got started with Drupal Easy, um, Mike Anello tasked me with improving documentation because I could never figure out how a module worked from the README. And I thought, who am I to contribute to documentation when I don't know what I'm doing? And it turned out I was that perfect person because I could, I could, I was able to evaluate the README by knowing that there were steps missing. So I was that perfect person to fill in those gaps. Um, and when you help with that document documentation, it helps that next developer out or that next new person. So documentation is super important. Um, there's different types of documentation. There are official guides. These are, um, governed by maintainers um, in the Drupal world, and they're held to a more rigorous standard um, through an editorial process that has to be, um, it's uh, curated. 
And these guides include uh, the Drupal user guide, evaluator guides, and local development guides. There's community guides. These are these do not go through that sort of editorial process. They're pretty straightforward. You go to the guide. There's an edit button on the top. You hit edit, and you're able to um, um, make small changes. And this is community documentation that can be edited by anybody who has a Drupal.org account. Um, some of these guides include the Drupal guide, which is that catch-all for Drupal 8, 9, and later. You can find the Drupal 7, 6, 5 guides, but they aren't really, I don't even think you can edit them anymore. I think they're static pages. Um, there's developer guides. That's documentation for developers about tools, processes, and standards not specific to any um, version of Drupal. And then there's API guides, um, and they provide that general overview of all of those core APIs. Um, contributor guides. Uh, in this section on the Drupal.org website, you find information to help you figure out how to bring your unique and individual skills and perspectives and join with others in the community to improve that software translation documentation and even community pages. So this is this is more along the lines of um, uh, you know, event organization, um, how to find a task in the issue queue, things like that. And then there's um, individual contribution guides for individual extensions, like for the modules. Um, these can be found in external documentation pages or internally within the, the repository itself. And that's again, is for those individual um, modules like meta tag or responsive images. So if you find something um, in the readme, you know, it's a little bit of code, but mostly documentation. And then um, there's always a need for contributions when it comes to translations. Um, some versions of Drupal only have incomplete versions of text and core, you know, for all the different translations. Um, and for the most part, you know, all of these interface, interfaces show up in English, you know, that user interface. In, interface. Um, those incomplete versions um, always need corrections and improvement on those languages. Um, I was told, and I don't know if this is true because this was about a year and a half ago, that no language has a complete set of translations beyond English for all of the contributed modules. Um, and then some of the things that you can do is you can review a translation, you can review new and updated translations by new translators so they can be accepted into that localization system. You can be a translation monitor. And you can review um, new and updated translations, making them either, you can mark them either approved or rejected. So there's a few different things that you can do in that localization world. Sharing your knowledge. This is an important part of Drupal that I think people, um, uh, there's a little bit of oversight for. There are all different ways to share your knowledge. You know, there's presentations, there's um, mentoring. You can lead discussions like what we have at DrupalCon or DrupalCon at MidCamp this week, you know, uh, birds of a feather sessions. Um, and they don't always have to be about tech, you know, um, or they can be uh, Drupal adjacent. And then you can like lead trainings. So there's a few different ways you can share your knowledge. Um, one of the reasons there's a few, uh, like I can, I can attest to why I like to share my knowledge. Um, it builds my confidence. They say that sometimes the best way to learn something is to teach it. And every time I give a new presentation on accessibility or, um, or uh, accessible media, or even this presentation, I learn something new with each slide deck I, uh, I create. Um, you can be seen as an authority in your field, you know, helping build that resume again. It's rewarding. Um, it really gives you a feeling of accomplishment to, to, to share your knowledge with others. Um, in the past, I liked to share because I like to travel and go around and go all the different places. And giving presentations and mentoring and training was just sort of an excuse to get to another town and another Drupal camp. Um, you're at that Drupal camp, so you're learning, you know, like I said, te uh, speaking teaches you more. Um, and then if you are a member of a traditionally excluded community, you can be a role model for marginalized and underrepresented and excluded groups um, because folks will look at 
the speaker pages or the trainer pages or the organizer pages and see people that look like them. Um, so that's just something to be mindful for. Um, different types of presentations, they're all different types. We'll see them all through the week here at MidCamp. You know, you can lead a panel, you can lead a BOF, um, you can lead lightning talks, uh, you can do discussions and roundtables, you can do how-tos and panels, all different ways that you can share your knowledge. You don't want to give a 45-minute presentation. That's okay, you don't have to. You can do a lightning talk or a, a panel. And where do you find these events? You know, uh, there's Drupalcall, which is... I think being antiquated, but Drupal.org has a new page um, at slash community slash events. And that's a curation of all different kinds of events right now. And um, you'll see call for papers, you'll see meetups, you'll see trainings, all different things there. Which is a good segue into giving back to Drupal in the form of organizing events. Um, there is a formal group for this. Um, you don't have to join, but it's a good start to kind of get some resources. And that sun is in my eyeballs again. So let me just shift one more time. Okay. Um, the event organizer working group has its own Slack channel. Um, you can reach out to me or like Avi or Kevin, and we can get you that Slack channel. Um, they meet the second Thursday that information is not right. They meet the second Tuesday monthly. And because of UTC world time, it really turns out to be Monday afternoons for us at like 4 p.m. or 4 a.m. But they do meet um, once a month and kind of get together and talk about things. And you know, you don't have to organize a Drupal camp. You can do a meetup. That's a, um, an informal gathering of people who are interested in your technology. And it's about building your local community. You know, I help organize San Francisco Drupal Users Group because I live in that community. Um, camps, those are um, technology focused events that really bring together that it's an extension of your local community. So I have San Francisco Drupal Users Group and the extension of that is the Bay Area or Bad Camp um, where, where we um, pull together a little bit more people. Um, and then there's DrupalCon, you know, that's that continent level gathering, um, usually meets for a few days or a week. It includes all different kinds of events, contributions, keynotes, um, sessions, boffs. Um, and these are organized by professional event planners in conjunction with the Drupal Association or the DA, but they are always open for volunteers. They're always looking for people to help out with program selection, uh, the different um, summits, you know, like the higher ed summit or community summit, and they're also looking for um, people to volunteer. So there's all different things, different ways that you can help organize events. What are some of the roles? And I'm just going to read this slide because of ADA purposes. Um, you can contribute with the website, um, either through code or through uh, copy editing or authoring. You can help out with marketing um, or the social media. You can provide trainings or do training outreach. You can help organize and select sessions or pitch sessions. You can help out with financing. You can help out with social events. Um, in more traditional times, helping out with swag or print, you know, um, audio visual. You can coordinate volunteers. You can help with contribution days. Um, there's sponsorship wrangling. There's always a need to help with accessibility in all of our spaces. Um, also, it's really important to make sure that we represent all of our communities in our, in our camps and cons. So diversity, inclusion, and equity is a good way to get involved. And then there's the code of conduct. Okay, so moving out of event organization, something else that you can do to help Drupal is promoting the platform. Um, letting people know it exists, you know, what is it, three or 4% of the web runs on Drupal? Well, you know, there's this little thing called WordPress that everyone seems to know about, and it runs 30%. Imagine if all of us promoted Drupal the way that WordPress promotes their platform. I think the numbers would like really, well, not shift to 30% necessarily, but those numbers can really have the potential to go up. Um, and there is a group specifically working on this initiative, you know, Suzanne Durkacheka from um, Evolving Web leads these efforts. It's called Promote Drupal. Um, they have 
um, presentations already made up for folks. So if you're part of an agency and you're pitching Drupal for a client, they have why you use Drupal presentations already made. But on the flip side of that, they also need help creating those presentations. They need help with social media, um, taking pictures of events and sending them to the initiative leads is a great way to promote Drupal. If you're at your local Drupal event and you take some pictures and you can spread those pictures around and you know Drupal is really fun and having those fun pictures is a great way to promote it. And then there's always a need for the creation of new logos. So if you're a designer or um, you know, you're very creative, drawing up new logos for, for, for the promoting um, the platform um, is a great way to give back. Um, let's see, there's a marketing role, you know, let's say you're a marketer, um, they're always needing someone to help like write the copy, they need designers, they need videographers, um, they really need communicators in this space, people who do a good job communicating and leading and um, sort of those influencer roles. And I already talked a little bit about translations and localizations, but this is this slide's more about that promote Drupal initiative because they need translations in that too. Um, they need folks to translate the pitch deck, um, translate the user interface of their uh, media, um, and again, they need you know reviewers, moderators, and translators themselves. Um, in the issue queue, you know, not only is there a code issue queue, there are different issue queues in the Drupal space. Um, and reviewing content um, is a, a non-code way to give back. Um, there's Drupal.org site moderators queue. This used to be called webmasters, but in our, in our quest for more uh, inclusive language, we've changed the name recently to site moderators. So, um, a few of these I'm I'm gonna list off. They are at drupal.org slash project slash this one's site moderators. Um, site moderators is uh, kind of a low key entry into reviewing content. It's basically participating in the issues that come up in this queue, uh, providing guidance um, for some folks. A lot of it is um, reviewing um, user accounts and reviewing things that were flagged as spam. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to get in there and start, but I recommend kind of going through the issue queue and reviewing it maybe a couple of times a week. And then when you think you get the hang of it, you know, jump in there, ask questions. Um, uh, everyone in that space is super nice and super handy and will kind of help you guide through those first uh, those first reviews that you do in the issue queue. And it's a great way to kind of get to know the new Drupal community because most of these people who are asking for content reviews on their, on their um, accounts are new users. So it's a great way to meet new people. And then there's, um, the link is wrong on here, but there's drupal.org content queue. And this has all different kinds of things. Um, this is book listings, reviewing case studies, um, Agencies will request will request case studies for front page promotion. Hosting accounts will ask um, for approval. Organizational profile organization profiles um, don't automatically get put on the Drupal listing page. Um, they have to be reviewed by people, you know. And um, uh, different camps and different blogs will request access to RSS feeds through Drupal Planet. Um, Organizations will ask for uh, uh, their organization page to be listed on trainings. And again, all of this stuff, if you review the queue and just kind of go through some of those past issues um, and familiarize yourself with what other moderators are doing, um, it's pretty straightforward. And there's also documentation pages involved with this too. But you know, you're a non-coder, you want to give back, you have an hour, you can spend some time in this content queue and you know, perhaps uh, approve a couple of case studies in that time. And this issue queue is very, very long. There is a backlog of organizations waiting for approval. There is a backlog of blogs that want to be on Drupal Planet. So this is a spectacular way to get some of those organizations and, and individuals, you know, getting started in Drupal. 
Um, there's different community initiatives. Um, we hear about the code initiatives, you know, um, we hear about, you know, the easy out of the box and the decoupled menus initiative. Well, those are more of that code moving the Drupal code forward, but there's tons of community initiatives too. Um, here's some of the, the community initiatives. Um, you know, there's the bug spat smash initiative. This is the initiative to fix known bugs in Drupal core. Um, the no, non-code way to participate is that they need lots of help with documentation. Uh, they need help um, with issue summaries. You know, issue summaries need to be updated. Um, you can contribute to accessibility. Uh, these issues are important for both end users, um, you know, our site visitors who use screen readers or, you know, use alternative input devices. And it's also really valuable for people who are building Drupal sites as well, because remember, we need that back end to be accessible to folks who use that same software. So it's not only front end accessibility, but it's our back end builder experience as well. Um, Drupal 8 or Drupal 9 experience, we really want to improve our content creation tools for Drupal 8, you know. Um, we really want that UX experience to, to, to be good, right? You know, we don't want people to walk away because they can't figure out how to use Layout Builder. Um, there's the documentation initiative. You know, I talked about this earlier. Um, it's, they have their own working group called the Documentation Working Group, and it ensures that Drupal has excellent tools and procedures in place for documentation. And Drupal Ladder, this is getting active users on Drupal.org to contribute to Drupal Core by um, having issue sprints or, or learning sprints. And a lot of these are at Drupal Group, um, Drupal user meetups or camps and conferences. There is the Drupal Recording Initiative. And <laughs> Kevin's smiling, he's on this. Um, on in the attendees over here. But um, there's always a need for someone to help out with this because Kevin can't go to all of the camps, you know? Um, so outreach, you know, um, once the videos are up on, or, or once the videos have been collected, you know, um, editing those videos, um, editing the videos for, uh, for closed captioning, things like that. Um, providing camp support, you know, helping marketing the initiative, you know, providing documentation, you know, uh, making sure that the next people who, who go to a camp know what to do, you know, make sure there's no holes in that documentation. Um, and I have some words from him um, that he's not the only person recording the sessions, but he's definitely the loudest and most prolific. Again, those are his words. Um, his tweets in siloed camp YouTube channels are not optimal for the greater community to find content. He just doesn't have that bandwidth, you know? So again, aggregating content from all of the events, including DrupalCon, you know, um, curation and content um, authors to annotate various versions of the same talk because some of us give the same talk, but it might be iterative the next time, you know, but making sure that folks know that in the notes, um, in the in the YouTube comments and things like that, you know, adding tags, you know, so people can discover the content, um, captioning, and then, you know, promoting the local events as well as the project itself. So there's all different things that you can do with this recording initiative. There's the Drupal diversity and inclusion team. Um, this group welcomes all types of contributors as well, programmers, content managers, project staff. Um, however you identify as a contributor and as part of the Drupal community, there's a place to get involved with this team. They have their own Slack channel. It's diversity-inclusion in Drupal Slack. They have weekly meetings Thursdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and there's a few different ways that you can give back to this initiative. They have a resource library, which is uh, say you came across a, a good article recently, you can submit that, um, you know, they curate resources. Um, they have a contrib team. They are a group working to increase code based contributions from individuals in those previously excluded groups. Um, and they have their own specific channel as well, DDI dash contrib dash team. Um, they provide session help, you know, say you um, want to submit a session to DrupalCon or Drupal Camp Asheville, you can go into their Slack channel and kind of give your pitch, 
put your pitch in there and they'll help you with that. They'll have people that will help review your content and they need people to help do that, that as well. Um, and then they have the diversity and inclusion speaker initiative. You know, Alana was on yesterday at mid camp um, and gave a series of three workshops on um, how to become a better speaker, how to write a pitch, how to write a bio. Um, but, you know, that group can't be everywhere all the time. And so they're always looking for people to help out with those speaker workshops at camps. And um, there is the community working group. Um, there's the conflict resolution and code of conduct enforcement team. Um, this area focuses on conflict resolution within the community. Um, this isn't a really open space to get involved with, but currently right now they are looking folks to fill a role that is vacant. So that's why I have the conflict resolution um, team in here. Um, they have a community health and development team. Um, this area focuses on um, providing resources to the wider Drupal community. Um, I'm a part of this team. We share knowledge and raise awareness and promote engagement on issues that impact the Drupal community. Um, we're looking for subject matter experts, um, kind of global experts. Um, uh, some of the subject matter experts we have now are like we have a diversity and inclusion expert, we have a mental health expert, you know, so we're always looking for different people to help us out with community health and engagement. And then for more ideas, there's actually an issue queue, drupal.org slash projects slash issues slash ideas. There's an issue queue where if you have like this little thing that you're always thinking about, you can pitch the idea in this issue queue. Um, and there's all different kinds of things in there, privacy, you know, CLI tools, Composer, Olivero, which is now in Drupal core, started out as an idea in this issue queue. So a good way to get involved is to kind of look at this issue queue. And if there's an issue in there that resonates with you, ask to collaborate, you know, give your input, things like that. And um, I'm kind of coming to the end of my curated part of the discussion, but I want to remind folks that you can volunteer at MidCamp. Um, we still have things open for tomorrow. You know, we're doing a non-conference. I don't know too much about it, but you can reach out to organizers um, and pitch your idea for tomorrow. And we're all kind of like getting around and voting and seeing what things we want to hear about. Um, we're looking for room monitors and we're also looking for organizers and volunteers for next year too. Um, we do realize as a team, we're not as diverse as we could be. So please, if you know somebody who can contribute in a way or, um, or can collaborate with our mid-camp team, we would love more collaborators with us. Um, and just saying this, you know, I need to pitch that DrupalCon's coming up. There are initiative days. Um, this is more in the code part, but each day of DrupalCon is going to be sort of a half day of sessions and then a half day of contributions. So if you haven't been involved in um, code contributions yet, this DrupalCon is a great time to do it because all five days there will be space for contributors. There are all kinds of mentors available. If you want to be a mentor, that's great too. Um, and you do not have to have a ticket to DrupalCon to go to the contribution half of the day. So that's really important to know connect with me, Volkswagen chick. And then um, just because we're at mid-camp, uh, contribution day is on Saturday. And I will do this workshop, but a little bit different where I don't talk about the community initiatives, but I talk about those code things like, you know, how to create an issue, how to work in the issue queue, some issue queue etiquette and reviewing a patch, um, going over the old workflow, which is still being used. Um, but then Mark will come in after me and talk about the new workflow about merge requests. So um, that is sort of the end of the uh, formal presentation. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we have a few minutes just to kind of chat too. Um, if anyone wants to share like different things that I don't talk about because I don't have time to talk about everything, right? Or I don't know about everything. <laughs> Anybody? It's okay that you don't share too, but uh, I would just add that it's important for everybody to realize the past life prior experience that you bring to this community outside of or possibly 
tied to what you develop. Um, Cause at my past job, that's where I learned video editing and event organization. And so never did I think at that time that that would be useful as a way to give back to the community, especially cause way back then the only published or publicized or talked about way to give back was through patches in the issue queue. So I always felt like I was not doing my job. Um, but I, I think it's, can't stress enough the value of what your past experience can bring. And this is true because I'm a hospice nurse by trade and a Volkswagen mechanic in a previous lifetime. And both of those skills have really helped me in the Drupal community. One, because when I realized that folks could make accessible websites and they didn't, that kicked in my hospice experience of working with people who would have to have their emails read to them. What a lack of privacy, you know, or um, the Volkswagen mechanic being the only woman in a shop helps me with the diversity inclusion group because I know what it's like to be that marginalized person that just gets kind of like, oh, well, that's just, you're just a girl, you know, just move along and do your thing, you know, so that, that's really true, Kevin. <laughs> I think Leslie's going to say something. Uh, sure, I can say something. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I always join your talks. I really appreciate what you do for the community in terms of spreading all this information. So I join them because I, I don't have time to keep up to date on everything either. So having you go over all the new things that people can do then gives me that information that I can then share with groups that I deal with. So I really appreciate the fact that you take the time to do this. Thanks, Leslie. Yeah, well, so, okay, so back to that past experience, right? Like I'm a mom of two boys and I homeschooled for a while because I lived really rural. That's sort of tangential, but whatever. But homeschooling like was really rewarding for me. And then being a director of nursing at a, at a where I trained CNAs, teaching people was really rewarding for me. And when I first got into Drupal, um, that, warm and fuzzy feeling of teaching people went away because, and I missed that. And so I worked for a company that gave a lot of like community sessions and trainings. I was like, well, what can I talk about? And they're like, well, you know how to make a patch. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. That's the only thing I know how to do. And they're like, that's okay because someone else doesn't know how to do that. And when I started doing that, I started getting that warm and fuzzy feeling again. You know, like it's not just altruistic because it makes you feel good when you help people. You know, like, like I can't stress that enough about like why I like do what I do is because it makes me feel good when I teach other people and I know that like the Drupal project's moving forward or whatever. And that darn sun. Um, I think there's a cloud that like, like goes in front of the sun and stuff. And I have this, well, you can tell it's Venetian blinds. Um, <laughs> the pandemic like has me in this little corner of the kitchen. But, um, but like that, that one thing that I knew though, you know, like Kevin, like the recording, you know, focusing on that one thing can really take you a lot of different places, you know? Like I said, I only knew how to patch. That's the only thing that Drupal shop had me doing was creating patches. And it was like, I didn't think that that was valuable because I thought, well, if I know how to do it and I'm not a coder, then other people already know how to do it. That was my thought. And it was like, wow. And I met Leslie at, um, at, at, uh, Ned camp and I did my like first presentation on that, you know, and I realized that you can be in Drupal for 12 years and not know how to make a patch, you know what I mean? And so just like keeping that in mind that your individual skill set and experiences really can like help everybody out. So, but not everyone's a public speaker and I know that. <laughs> But mentoring, um, Ellie helps with mentoring. You know, you don't have to be a public speaker to help mentor. You can be side by side with someone, you know, and even though like I don't code very much, I have the toolkit on how to know how to figure something out and just helping that person through Stack Exchange or going and like using keywords, you know, my contribution to that, you know, it, you don't have to know how to know everything to mentor. It's just, figuring out with somebody else, you know, and it kind of feels good when you're being mentored to 
to have someone that doesn't know everything helping you because it's a group experience, you know, and it really, you know, just sort of it's more empowering that way, I think. Okay, so I've done a lot of talking, like maybe we can finish up and get two minutes back. <laughs> okay, thanks Leslie and Ellie and Kevin and Sarah for coming. I appreciate you all. Yep, thank you. And your, your recording will help a lot more people that, that may not have been able to get, come here today. So thank you, Kevin, for doing that. Oh, all the recordings yep. <laughs> are so valuable to the entire community. Really appreciate that. But yeah, not a lot of people necessarily can come to all, all these Zoom meetings. And um, But having the recordings is awesome. So even though there's only a few of us, you're, what you're saying will we'll reach a lot of folks. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Amy June. Okay. See you all in a bit.